NCAA present the national championship game of the Division I Men's Lacrosse Tournament. From Bird Stadium on the campus of College Park, Maryland's University of Maryland, it's the Johns Hopkins Blue Jays taking on the defending national champions from Syracuse University. And a pleasant good day, everyone. I'm Tom Meese. And in just a few moments, two of the most tradition-laden programs in college lacrosse, the Johns Hopkins Blue Jays and the Syracuse Orangemen will have at it. But how do they get to today's national championship game? Well, a couple of days ago, Syracuse took on the University of Maryland in one of the men's Division I semifinals. And early on in that game, in fact, before the game was two minutes old, the Gate brothers had an impact. First, it was Paul Gate with the first of three goals on the day, giving Syracuse an early lead. Not to be outdone, his twin brother Gary Gate added five goals and two assists as the Orange romped over the homestanding Terrapins, 18 to 8. No wonder after the game, head coach Roy Simmons had a right to flash the number one side and feel confident entering today's game. In the second semifinal yesterday, Matt Panetta's third quarter goal brought Johns Hopkins into a 5-5 tie with North Carolina. And a few minutes later, Greg Kelly's goal gave Johns Hopkins the lead for good. The result, a 10-6 win and a date for Coach Don Zimmerman's Blue Jays in the finals today against Syracuse University. Back here at Bird Stadium, I'm joined by our expert commentator, Leif Elsmo. And Leif, you talk about offense in college lacrosse. You have to begin with Syracuse. Well, Tom, Syracuse says we play the game the way it should be played. And they certainly do. Wide open, a lot of transition, a lot of shots. And that's led by a dynamic quadrant of four players. And the two you really have to focus on that revolutionized the game the last two years are the Gate brothers, Gary and Paul. Gary, of course, with the air gate shot last year. Paul, equally as good, only a, one small notch down in the stats. These two guys are a focus. They play on the same unit, Tom. That means if you put Petromala on one, the other's going to be open. You mentioned Petromala. We're speaking of the first-team All-American defenseman at Johns Hopkins Day, Petromala, in company with goaltender Quint Kestenick. If those two play at the top of their game, Johns Hopkins got a shot. Well, they start at the top of the game. They're Division I All-Americans, the best in the game. Petromala and then Kesenik behind him, but there's only two of them. They're going to need three other guys to cover the full roster that Syracuse has, but those two guys, no question about it, critical that they have the best game of this year. Revenge could be on the mind of the Orangemen today. Their only loss of the year, the season opener by one goal at Johns Hopkins. What will happen today in College Park? We'll be back to find out in a moment. You might wonder why we call the Hopkins Blue Jays and the Orangemen of Syracuse the powers of the 80s. Here's a graphic reason why. Look at the way they've dominated the championship here in this decade of the 1980s. And these two teams met back on March 4th in the very first game of the year. The white team is Johns Hopkins. And on the 10-man ride, goaltender Palem gets beat. He was on the ride trying to pressure that ball out of bounds and Matt Panetta scored his third goal of the game as Johns Hopkins came away with a 14-13 victory before more than 12,000 delirious fans at the Homewood Field in Baltimore, Maryland. And there's a live look at the Johns Hopkins Blue Jays. We take a look at the series between these two teams in the 80s. Hopkins leading it five games to four. The Blue Jays, of course, coached by Don Zimmerman. And there is the Syracuse Orangemen, the defending national champions, coached by Roy Simmons, Jr., getting set to try and repeat here in 1989. The goaltender is Quint Kessner, first team All-American for the Johns Hopkins Blue Jays, a save percentage of over 65%, and he was excellent against North Carolina in the semifinal game for Johns Hopkins. On the other end of the field, number 10, Matt Palem, who was also very, very good in the goal against the University of Maryland Terrapins just a couple of days ago here in College Park. So there you have it. Syracuse and Johns Hopkins about ready to face off for the national championship. There's the field here at College Park, Maryland's Bird Stadium. Another excellent crowd on a perfect weather day, 79 degrees. Humidity very comfortable indeed at 70%. The field is dry and it's so closely cut that you could almost call it AstroTurf. It'll be a very fast track here today. That should benefit both these teams, and including, of course, Syracuse, which loves that up-and-down game. One of the keys today may be the face-offs, and if that is indeed the case, then this man, Joel Rezin Pollock, who is the specialist in the face-off category for Johns Hopkins, will play a big part. As you see, he won 14 out of 19 face-offs against North Carolina. Leif Helsmo, he will be one of the key men we'll watch for the Blue Jays today. No question about it. 75% against Carolina. That is unheard of. He was dramatic in that game. He'll have to be equally as impressive here. He did face off against Pratt Syracuse earlier this year. But that was the first game of the season for Syracuse. They feel that was not indicative of how good this team is as we look at Roy Simmons. They feel that Pratt has seasoned himself and he's ready to face off against 
Don Zimmerman's Joe Rosen Pollock. Well, I'll tell you, Zimmerman and Simmons, there's a contrast as well. Zimmerman, very uptight, almost a military uh, aspect to his behavior. Boy, Simmons laid back, and hey, we don't win the game, the sun will rise tomorrow. And the teams reflect that kind of uh, demeanor and style. Zimmerman right there has the best coaching staff in the country as far as intensity, and they always play great. There is just a portion of the sun-spangled crowd we have here today at Bird Stadium. Very well attended this tournament. They set a record in the semifinal round of over 20,200. And I guess we're at or maybe a little bit above that by the time they all come through the turnstiles today at Bird Stadium in College Park, Maryland. Tom Means with Leif Helsmo and the introductions have been made. The teams are taking the field and we're taking a look. We talked about Rosen Pollock for Johns Hopkins. Kirk Pratt will be his opposite number on the faceoff for Syracuse. Tom, I mentioned Kirk Pratt in the sense that he faced off against Rosen Pollock the first game this year. And Simmons feels that he has seasoned so much since then. He feels good about this matchup. Pratt against Rosen Pollock. Of course, Rosen Pollock again, 75% yesterday against Carolina. One of the big reasons they're here today. Well, Syracuse, Matt Palom will defend the goal to your left. And Quint Kessenick may hear him banging the post with his stick. He'll defend the goal to the right. Tom, look at this face off in the wide shot. Syracuse may be the only team in the country to use their normal midfielders. The Gate brothers are on the wings. That's thinking all offense. Everybody else uses a long sticks pole, and Hopkins is no exception. The face off between Pratt and Resin Pollock, and it's controlled by Kurt Pratt of Syracuse, and here come the Orangemen. Pratt hustling into the Hopkins zone. You see the matchup right away. Petromala is taking Gary Gate. I feel Paul Gate, this will open the door for him to have a big day today. And Paul Gate wanted to take the shot. Can't get away. Now he does and scores. Just 19 seconds into this lacrosse match. Paul Gate. And it's 1 0 Syracuse. All right, two guys of star quality on one midfield. And this is what happens. Gary Gate being occupied by Petromala. Double team against his great brother, Paul. And Paul comes in, beats two players, shoots right-handed. They said he doesn't have a right hand, Tom. He shot one there, and he beats the first team All-America. Watch this. Two guys he beats, and then shoots right-handed, which is almost unheard of. They say he's all left. He's all left. Great opening move by Paul Gate. And the other man was bothering Gate, or trying to bother him from taking that shot, was Brian Volker, but Gate beat everybody and it's one nothing Syracuse Pratt Resin Pollock again fighting with the faceoff and Petromala picks it up for the Blue Jays and passes long back to Kessinick as goaltender part of their control game and that's why Petromala's in on the faceoff they'll control it bring it back and now they work into a controlled situation on offense you won't see uh, John Hopkins be very frenetic with the ball will you well you know they can be and that's the misnomer they will not be frivolous with it on the defensive end of the field but they can run with anybody on the offense they'll take everything you give them this is Jeff Iim with it on the right wing. Being pressured outside, so he'll pass back to the middle to John Wilkins. Matt Palin banging his stick against the post. A lot of Hextall in hockey, but in lacrosse, it's very, very common for the goaltenders to do that, to know where they're oriented at all times, to know where those posts are, those pipes. Wilkins with the ball. He's a big gun out there in the midfield. A tremendous left-handed shot. Being bothered there by Phil Schluter on defense. Double team now, man open. It is Wilkins. If they move the ball, he'll be open. It's Kelly. Brendan Kelly, the team captain, falls to the turf. No whistle. Johns Hopkins fans wanted it, but Syracuse comes up with a ground ball. They could have gotten it too, but the referee didn't think so. Nice hustling play by Syracuse, and Hopkins would have moved the ball quicker. They would have had a good shot. McKay recovered it for Syracuse, and a dangerous play near the crease area. But Kessinick recovers the loose ball and gets quickly up to Kelly. Again, they'll pattern that offense to a slow down, more of a control situation. And that can lull a team to sleep because if they get the opportunity, they'll step up the tempo. Well, the old uh, strategy, as long as my team's got the ball, your team can't score. 19 seconds it took the Gate, one of the Gate brothers, to score. Paul Gate scoring to open it up, and it's one of them Syracuse. This is Rob Persing behind 34 playing defense. He's a long sticks midi playing against the attack of Jeff Iim. Iim tries to get around him, has the shot, and the save is made by Palin. A nice slow shot by Iim, but Palin is ready for it. Hopkins got the matchup they wanted. They are so good at exploring these matchups and pulling out what they need to get. They got Iim against the long sticks midi, inverted the midfielders with the attack, got the matchup, and a good shot. Palin came up big. May you have a look at the Canadian connection, and boy, they put up some numbers this season, or what? Eight less than the entire Hopkins team. Hopkins not known to score a lot of goals. They need to keep it close to single digits today. 
Behind the net it is now to number 42, Tom Marichek. Marichek, this is Zilberti, number 11 with it. Zilberti holding it in his right hand. And Zilberti loses control due to the checking of Billy Guan, but he gets it right back. In front, it goes for the shot that goes wide from number 14, Greg Burns. Out of bounds, it'll stay in the position of Syracuse. Good break for Hopkins. That was a sensational rocket shot low. They just missed the 6x6. Six six. That's 36 square feet. He was a little bit to the right as we look at Zimmerman. Had that been on goal, I think that would have been goal number two. They're moving the ball beautifully. In the second matchup, we've got to watch is Billy Dwan of Hopkins against the great player, Zilberti, right there with the ball. Marichek to Zilberti, back to number 22. That is Gary Gate. And still Petromala matched up on Gary. And this is Paul Gate, number 19. He'll be matched up against Brian Volker. That's the one they can exploit, I feel. And Dumpson, Rodney Dumpson, the other member of that attack line, got off a quick shot, but Kesnick was equal to it. Dumpson got off a good shot, but there you go. You're number one, uh, Division One All-America right there. Kesnick is sensational. The Blue Jays, Billy Dwan at the center of the field. Careful not to go offside. Gives to Resin Pollock. You must keep three men plus the goaltender back in your half of the field at all times. Clearing in 89. You can see right here the Blue Jays uh, clear the ball very efficiently. Clearing will not be a factor, I don't think, in this championship game. Uh, Hopkins will let them clear it if there's any sort of trouble contesting it in the midfield. They'd rather play six on six defense. Greg Kelly cuts toward the crease area, but he's cut off at the pass there by Rob Persing. Kelly still with it. Tries to use a pick from Adam Wright. Kelly comes in and his shot is way high and long. And it will maintain possession to Johns Hopkins. 10-44 left first quarter. 1-0. Syracuse on top. Surprise here. This is what Panetta, six feet, 195. He's the leader. He's the guy to go to. He's only a sophomore, but he can really stick it. He's a finisher. And he's going against Mark Stouffer. He's a second team All America from Syracuse. And Stouffer's a position player. Stouffer won the first battle early in this game. That was the second time that the great Panetta got the ball. He came right in, made his classic move, spun, and got a good shot against Palem, 1 1. 10.38 left to play here in the first quarter. Syracuse scored 19 seconds into the game, and Johns Hopkins has just tied it up at one. As Impala gets it over to Petromala. Petromala comes in. He's all alone by the defense, and at the last minute, a nice check there by number 22, Gary Gate, forced him to lose control. Gary Gate's got the best wrap check in lacrosse, and he made it work right there. Halem behind the net, got it away to his teammate. That's Gary Gate again with the ball. He plays the full length of the field. And this field, incidentally, is the full dimensions allowed in lacrosse, Tom. 110 yards long, 60 yards wide. Almost like a Canadian football league field. That ball bounced right off of Petromala. He did that so effectively yesterday against Carolina. You've got a shooter around him. He will not only play tough defense against you, he'll block the shot, saving Kesnick the problem. Gary Gate got it back for Syracuse. Out in front of Paul Gate. He winds up and scores. Paul Gate is Syracuse at 2-1 lead. This is the matchup I was really afraid of for Hopkins because, again, Gary Gates getting the attention. Paul Gate, there's not much difference between Paul and Gary. Gary just gets the press because of the alley-oop shot last year, the air gate shot. Here he is, wide open. Look at the soft defense on him. Dwan tries to slide over way too late. And when you've got the shot with the velocity of a Paul Gate, Tom, you don't have to come in and get right on top of the goalie. You just crank up. You've got the full 36 square feet. You pick your corner, and he made it work. And Greg Burns fitted him with a nice assist on that goal. How can you play against or defend a midfield that has two first-team All-Americans right there playing at the same time, yep. along with Marichek and Zoberti on the offense? The Gate brothers were very matter-of-fact in interviews after the game against the University of Maryland. They had great games, and they said, well, we expect to have great games. We're pretty good players. Another reason I looked for Paul to have a big day today was because in the first match of this year, Tom, Gary had three goals, but Paul was scoreless in that first game, and I'm sure in his own quiet way, he's going to make up for it. He already has two goals. Ball awarded to the Blue Jays of Johns Hopkins as we take a look at the replay of the faceoff. A trip call, maybe, against Syracuse? Well, I'm looking for a push from behind, which is normally the case. And maybe a trip, like you said right there. Paul Gate in there tripping up. So Hopkins trailing 2-1. to one. This is Jeff Heim with the ball. And this is McCabe, the great defenseman. He's a lot like Fetcher Mala. Watch him, 29 for Syracuse. He'll, he's a ball stripper. He'll take that ball right away from his player if he can. Wilkins. Back and forth it goes between Wilkins and Brendan Kelly. 
Kelly, the team captain. Number 32 tries to get around his man. He's got a stick up around the neck and still gets the shot away. We're going to have a penalty. Well, he held him up there. You can see he got out of position. Kelly beat him. So rather than give it up, Scaramizamo, watch this. Rather than give it up, he got a step on him. Kelly got a step, so he's not going to give it up. Scaramizamo is right there, and he's going to hold him all the way, knowing that he'd rather have the extra man penalty than give him a good shot on goal that close. Extra man in the first game this year, Tom. Five chances for Hopkins. They did not score on any of the five. Syracuse will take the chances here rather than give him an open shot in front of Palin. So Steve Scaramuzino goes to the penalty box area. And the extra man attack for Hopkins trailing two to one. National championship game with college lacrosse here on ESPN. Brendan Kelly thinks better of it. Gives back to John Sheehan. They're working it around. And score! The number 23, Mike Marcy. And we're tied at two. Marcy has been a real sensational lift for this offense. Yesterday against Carolina, he had a big day, and he really has a good left-handed shot, something that was not evident in the first game of the season. Let's take a look. Look at all the room, the cushion they give him on the one side. He's got such a high-velocity shot now in confidence after being a freshman all year. He'll take that shot, something they didn't show in the first game, I'm sure, against Roy Simmons. And Palem goes down a little unsettled. That's a stop that on a hot day when he's really good, Palem's going to make. Uh, Marcy got the better of him there. You can see maybe a little bit different philosophy of how they approach this championship game. And the day before the game, the practice sessions by both teams, Syracuse was out here for about an hour. Josh Hopkins was out here almost the entire two hours allotted to him in the hot sun. Procedure penalty, the ball will go to Hopkins, and that hurts. Again, ball control is what they need to do if they score 2 2. You're right, Tom. The philosophy is uh, for Roy Simmons, he doesn't do much special. He's got a team that's uh, really well-versed on what they do offensively. He rolls the ball out there and says, go get him, guys. So a 2-2 score with 8.55 left in the first quarter. Hopkins with the ball. Great action so far. Brendan Kelly tries to get around Scaramuzino again. Behind the net, Dressel trying to pass it out in front for a quick shot from the slot area. Unsuccessful. Ball loose at the center of the turf, and Hopkins comes up with it. I thought they got a trip ball there, but they didn't pick it up. Hopkins now controls. He Hopkins really, I'm sorry, Tom, Hopkins really eats you up on opportunities. If you give them an inch, they'll take it. And Syracuse, with their wide open style, will give you the chances. And nobody takes advantage of more than Hopkins. Bill Schluter forcing the ball off the stick of John Wilkins, and Palom ends up with it for Syracuse. Gets it up to Schluter. You might see a shot here. They won't hesitate. Good over that long stick. Gets it back. And dropping it is Greg Burns. Just playing lost control of it himself. To Gate. This is Gary Gate. And it's a great situation for Syracuse. Normally transition. This is where they like to pump one at the goalie when he's unsettled. Zolberti to Paul Gate. And Gate couldn't control the pass from Zolberti. And a whistle. In the crease against Paul. Well, 7.52 left in the first quarter. Our score, Syracuse 2, John Tompkins 2. Back with more. And just kick. Hines comes around. Wants to take the shot. He's double team. Gets it outside to Adam Wright, whose shot is blocked off. Syracuse came up with it for the moment. Ball is kept in bounds, and Syracuse has it in the person of Schluter. Schluter being bothered from behind by Resin Pollock. Still controlled. Nice job by Schluter. Now it's bucked out. And can Hopkins control it? Yes, they do. Number nine, Jamie McNeely comes up with it. Schluter made a mistake by drifting into some problem areas there. He should have gotten rid of that ball when he got over midfield. Long pass upfield, it goes. And this is number 33, Greg Kelly. The shot goes out of bounds. It'll remain Hopkins' ball. Well, Kelly's mad at himself because we don't get that many open shots. He had an open shot. McCabe tried to slide over and just take up a little bit of an area to make him shoot early. But he had his shot, and he missed the 6x6. Six six. Well, they say any shot on goal is a good is a good shot, but if it's not on goal... Now watch the room again. He's got a cushion. McCabe just comes in there and tries to play two people, and the shot was wide to the right. He wanted that left pipe. He was well off. Shot is a score for John Hopkins. Matt Pineda. He came around and just almost like a basketball player taking a hook shot, rolled up on his defender, got some leverage, and fired it home. Normally, when you shoot from this high, the goalie's got to make the save because you can't shoot but in one area. Watch him go against Stoker. He'll go away from Stoker, go high, and that's where Palem has to assume he's going to go high with the ball. He can't go low with the ball because he's shooting from an elevated position. you got to hang that one on Palem. He should have come up off his toes a little more and snuff that ball out. The first lead of this lacrosse match for Johns Hopkins in this game 
And Coach Zimmerman, very animated on the sideline. Palem a little bit rocky here. A lot of shots going in on him, and the defense has to help him out. They did in that case. Stouffer again driving Benetta up and out in the air, and Palem has to come up a little bit higher and harder. Johns Hopkins won the championship two years ago. Last year, Hopkins did not make the Final Four for the only time this decade. Last year, of course, Syracuse won the title at the Carrier Dome against Cornell. Tom, five in a row, face-off-wise. Five out of six for Hopkins, and they are on a roll with ball control. Adam Wright sprints up the left way. He's checked, so he'll get it back to Resin Pollock, and he'll sit up. The other thing that happens with ball control against a thoroughbred team like Syracuse is that it frustrates you, especially when you start getting behind a little bit. You want to do it all now. You want to run now, and you start getting out of sync. Resin Pollock bothered a bit in there. Syracuse comes up with a loose ball. With it is Dan Cahey. Cahey double team gets away from it smartly. Cahey, junior from New York, six feet, 193. He made a sensational play to come in there and break up that pass when it initially went to his player. And he's being aggressive. That's what Roy likes to see. He really doesn't change too much as far as, far as philosophy. He wants to run and gun, open up the Jets. Now, let's go back to another big stat for the game, Tom. Shots. First game against Hopkins this year. Hopkins outshot him 50 to 33. Mm -hmm. Simmons wants about 55 shots against this team in order to win. Bonacci with it now. Has an angle, then has to disappear on him. Gets it back to Earl Hall. Stay safe, stay safe. You can hear Kesslick maybe calling out the signal. They'll control that defense. They're playing defense just like you are there. If you're back to the goal, he'll tell you where you are. All with a shot. Kesson it down and makes the save. Oh, shot by Hall. Kesson it to save. And here comes Billy Juan, who played very well against North Carolina. He's having a great year. That was the second midfield, and the Gates were taking a rest, and that's why a guy like Hall gets a chance from out front. They're cutting off Silberti. Iron gets by McCabe. Iron closes in. An open Matt Palin gambled, came out and tried to slide and knock him down, and the pass came very weakly, but he knew he was going to get his clock cleaned and just dropped it out. Watch on. He knows he's going to get his clock cleaned. He just oh. dribbles it out in front. Dressel picks it up. Nobody in the net. That's that gambling, frustrated style of Syracuse when they get behind. They want the ball. Palin lost that battle. And again, Hopkins, you give them a little bit of a crack like that. You make a small mistake, and they will eat you up. They take advantage of all mistakes. Roy Simmons Jr. has called a timeout for the defending champions from Syracuse. The underdogs, Johns Hopkins, four, Syracuse, two, back with more in the first quarter. Get them all. Custom to trailing, although it's very, very early in this lacrosse game. John Hopkins leading at 4 to 2. Joe Rosen calling. Did a great job in the face off stuff. This guy is the unsung hero of the Hopkins team. Hopkins just does all the fundamentals right. They do for every year they play the game. And he is a big example of what they do to make the full team work to the one goal of winning. Still no control on this face off. Resin Potter right there. Petromala has his long stick in there trying to get it for John Hopkins. Still no control. Finally. Oh, still no control, and coming up with it is Matt Panetta for John Hopkins, and now Syracuse has it. This is Gate. This is Gary Gate. In transition, that's where he likes to be. This is Paul Gate coming down the slot to score for Paul Gate. Reza Pollock stood there, couldn't do anything about it. Paul Gate has the same explosion on his shot that Gary does. That's his third goal of the game. And the only difference here against other games is that he's getting the opportunities. They're watching Gary. Gary brings his ball down, gets all the attention, and then it comes back to Paul. No attention on him, and he rifles a shot in. He's having a great start. Three goals again. Nothing in the first matchup of the year for Paul, from Paul Gate, Tom. He's looking to make amends on that. He's holding his team in close. From Brentwood Bay, British Columbia, the Gate brothers. And for those of you who may not know, Lacrosse is actually the formal national game of Canada. Hockey may be the most popular from uh, coast to coast in that country, but lacrosse is Canada's national game. The Gates were really surprised when they found out that the United States had teams on the East Coast playing the game. They thought they were special. <laughs> Paul Gates' pass intended for Marachek goes out of bounds. It'll be a turnover to Johns Hopkins. Checked out by Jamie McNeil. He did a nice job checking the stick of Marachek as he came across the crease. There's Paul Gate. Right now, the score, Hopkins four, Paul Gate three. He's doing a whale of a job keeping his team in the game. And you can bet that Gary Gate will get on the scoreboard more than once before the day is over. And don't forget Tom Marachek, who is second in goals on the team. And then, of course, Zilberti, who leads the team in points. Kasinik with it for Johns Hopkins. 
Hopkins has done a nice job, as you pointed out, Lee, for, before the game. They'll take advantage of every single mistake. They may not be the flashiest team in the world, but you just can't make any mistakes against them. Well, I don't think you can get many people arguing with the fact that uh, Syracuse has the better people. A little bit faster, a little bit stronger, a little bit quicker, a little deeper on the bench. But that doesn't matter. Hopkins will play you tooth and nail and not make mistakes. It's a team game. Nobody plays it better than Hopkins. Some pressure against the goaltender, Kessinich, so he takes off with it. This is Quint Kessinich. They got a four on three. He's going to have to slide. He may take the shot. Now he uses it to Dressel. Dressel to Panetta. Panetta. Oh, just wide. Oh, the crowd loves it when the goalie takes off. Well, he did the right thing. They gave him the opening, and now they went all the way down, four on three. A flag on the play, and maybe offsides. We'll see. No, they're waving it off, I believe. Yeah, official said he just dropped the flag. No penalty. Came down four on three as we look at Roy Simmons. He's a little bit concerned, but not much. I'll tell you what, no team can score in streaks or has proven that they can score in streaks with the explosive character of Syracuse. If you're within a goal or two, they can make that up in about 60 seconds. John Desco, he played uh, in the 79 game down here at Maryland. He's uh, the assistant coach, and what a great coach he is. That's a team, Roy Simmons and John Desco, that's been together for a long time. I'm trying to get through the Syracuse double team. Does so momentarily. Now can't control. Ball bounces out. It'll be taken by Brian Lukak. And the slide came from way out in front. The defensive help came from way out in front, Tom. And had that ball been in somebody's stick, they could have made two passes and probably burned them. They're very aggressive, not only in offense, but on their defensive slides. Wilkins with it, number 17. This is Lucas. To Brendan Kelly. Back to Brian Lucas. Lucas loses it momentarily. I'm trying to get it, couldn't do so, and Syracuse, Pat McCabe comes up with it. Pat McCabe is as much like Petsamala as anybody on the field. That'll be a slashing call. They'll get a continuation. They'll get a shot if they can maintain control. Scaramazzino still with it up the field for the Orange. Pass in deep. And a backhanded shot of the shot behind the back attempt by Earl Hall goes awry. He couldn't control the pass, but Syracuse now will have the extra man attack. Earl Hall was trying to imitate the Canadians. No reason to do it. He would be shooting right back into his defender. He had a step on everybody. Watch this. Scaramazzino comes in. The foul happened back there. The flag's in the air. Now, Scaramazzino knows that, and he continues downfield. They'll get an open shot if they can maintain possession. Bad mistake on Earl Hall's part. He had all the time in the world with a step on his defender. He had to know that if he was defensed, the guy was behind him. Yet, he put the stick behind him to shoot, which would have been right into the defense. He should have just taken the shot, turned, and fired point blank on Kessnick. 4-3, Johns Hopkins leading Syracuse, but Syracuse now with the extra man. And in the box for Johns Hopkins is John Wilkins. And this is the most potent Stop! extra man in the country. They score on about every other opportunity. 33% is about average. So they're well Great. above average Still Syracuse. Soft. Zalberti, no goal. will he break in? Yes, he will. And the shot is the same by Kentonick. And a whistle. Someone, I believe, in the crease area. That's that's uh, Zalberti in the crease area. And that's a move of frustration. You know, Kessnick, he got off easy there. Because uh, Zalberti, he doesn't have to shoot. There's no reason to go into a defender like that. He thought he had enough of a seam to come in. But look at Kessnick. He was up high before Zalberti was up high. He knew exactly. Watch Kessnick go up. He knew he was going to shoot high. That's from the scouting report and, of course, the great ability of Kessinick to know that Zalberti coming around the pipe is going to go high if he has to shoot right away. I would bet you a lot of money that that guy right there has been reading that scouting report that's probably seven, eight pages thick. Now, Zalberti, of course, if he if he scores the goal, he took the shot before entering the crease, and if the ball goes in in the goal, then he can land in the crease. But it didn't, and he did, and that's why it's John Hopkins' ball. And the reason that that's a mistake, Tom, is that you've got three guys that are what we call finishers, you know, the guys that can really put it in the hoop. He's a feeder. You've got Paul, Gary Gate, and Marichek on that extra man. Let them shoot. Loose ball behind a Hopkins. That is a goal, and Zalberti is home for his mistake. As it came loose, and some nice checking by Syracuse. A gimmick on this time, long sticks. See all the long sticks in there? Yep. Roy Simmons put in a number of long sticks, including Phil Schluter. Watch, Phil Schluter on the bottom there. He got the ball and brought it back. That was something they hadn't done all season. But Simmons put in the long sticks just for the ride. He got the ball back. It worked. And we've got a tie ball game. So that's called a long sticks ride. He put a long stick unit in there just to pressure those uh, alleys so the passing alleys were closed down a little bit so that you can play against the, the advantage of one extra man on offense with a little more efficiency. And it worked. So we have a new game at 4-4, 140 left to go here in the first quarter. Tom Hughes will leave Elk Mountain. First stadium in College Park. Here comes Hopkins, Resin Pollock to Dressel. 
The shot is the same as Apollo hits the pipe. He just had to push it by the goaltender, Palem. Palem got some help. He got a lot of help through luck because that ball, the first one hit him right in the face, the second one hit the pipe. So a little bit of luck there kept uh, Hopkins off the board. They moved the ball beautifully. That's an example, Tom, of you talk about slowing down. If they get a chance to push it, they push it. They did just there. This is Gate. Petromala now Gate. on Paul. Paul Gate with the underhanded shot, and Kensinick is the save, but it rolls out of the crease. Petromala comes up with it for John Hopkins. Oh, Kensinick almost had it stolen in the crease. And he was looking for a violation there. Look at the referee. Didn't get it. Well, Brady was right on him. This is Guan. Guan gives it up to Steve Ciccaroni. Ciccaroni up to John Ciccaroni, his brother. Nice check from behind, and Syracuse gets the ball back. That's 29, McCabe. He looks a lot like Petromala. He's only a sophomore, but great stick skills, just like Petromala. He'll strip the ball from you. Not a good matchup against Ciccaroni. Dumpson gets it over to Greg Burns. The shot by Burns, and Kessinick goes down to his knees to make the save again, and here he comes. We've had Burns shoot from outside. We've had uh, Paul shoot from outside. I would say those outside shots for the Canadian connection. They've got too much velocity. Kesselik is too strong. 15 seconds left in time running in the first quarter. What a great first quarter it's been. Hopkins for Syracuse for the national championship game. Here comes McCabe. McCabe, they got to hurry. Seven seconds. The long shot is a save by Kesselik as Pat McCabe took it in a rebound. Comes out of Syracuse scores with one second left in the first quarter. And I think it was Marichek. And Marichek shoots better behind the back, Tom, than he does in front of his back. And he got the opportunity to do just that as we see McCabe. McCabe has two times in a row in the last minute and a half stripped the ball. Watch McCabe. Comes down, shoots, easy save. Ball's loose. Watch 42. 42 behind the back. Oh. He loves that shot. He loves that shot. And he puts it in past Kesnick, who couldn't sacrifice position. Kesnick didn't have any opportunity to save that one. Right around behind the back. And Quince had to protect the stick side. And so that left the whole side behind. Behind him open. One second left on the goal by Marichek. And I'll just face it off to use up the time here in the first quarter. And that goal credit goes to McCabe, who stripped Hopkins of the ball two times straight. That's the end of the first quarter of play with the score. Syracuse by Johns Hopkins four, and the fans love it here in College Park. We'll be back with the second quarter action in just a moment. Stadium on the campus of the University of Maryland, one of the hotbeds of collegiate lacrosse, the national championship game. Syracuse defending champions leading Johns Hopkins, champs in 1987, five to four as we start the second quarter play. Tom Meese with Leaf Elsbo and Leaf, the face-offs and the reason that Johns Hopkins in this game, maybe. Shots are pretty even. Face-offs, again, Resin Pollock commanding uh, respect there. He's just taking over. The first one went to Syracuse. From then on, it's been all Resin Pollock. Ground ball, Syracuse a little bit better. That's where Syracuse can really kill you if they get a lot of ground balls and start that transition kind of offense. Well, the two teams, of course, will change ends of the field for the second quarter. So Syracuse will move from right to left, and Johns Hopkins from left to right. Resin Pollock and Pratt go for it, and Resin Pollock comes up with the opening faceoff of the second quarter. Tom, that last goal by Syracuse was typical of Syracuse. They get a lot of second shots. The ball's bouncing around in there. They have a lot of guys with good stick skills that'll pick it up and put it right back down your throat. Hopkins has to be leery of that second shot. They killed Maryland with it many times. This is Brendan Kelly with the ball. Hopkins setting up a play, moving into the Syracuse attack box. Substitution coming in. Brian Lucas comes in for John Hopkins, number 36. This is Wilkins. You can hear maybe the stick of Palin, the goaltender for Syracuse. Let's listen in, see if we can hear his call. You can see he's giving out signals like a traffic cop to his defense, and that time, fortunately for him, a shot did not reach him. Syracuse comes up with a loose ball. Lucas missed that feed. That was a great offensive set there, and Lucas just missed the feed. He had an excellent opportunity to score. Gary Gates coming in hard, but is checked off the ball. Still loose, and Syracuse comes back up with it. Gary has to watch. He doesn't press. He doesn't have to score for his team to win. Just move the ball. Paul Gay looking for his fourth goal today. Swings and sways and flies, and Pesney gets the set. Isn't he impressive? Oh. He comes in. You know, Tom, they talk about the Gays can't be that good because they only have one hand. They only play left-handed, just like Marichek. You don't need an, other, an off hand when you can shoot and pass with the accuracy they do behind the back. The behind-the-back move becomes your off hand. 
Well, he catches it with some nice work, saving the ball from going out of bounds and starting a clearing play for Johns Hopkins. Fundamentals. This team, again, will say a lot, but this team does not lose any battles in fundamentals. 5-4. Syracuse on top. They'll settle things down now. They want the right personnel in there. And we'll look at the Kesnick right there with the sideline. We'll see the sideline from time to time, Tom. We'll see why they're so fundamentally strong. This system is ingrained. It's a good system. But they've got about six All-Americans over there, that you, ex all americans who you come off the field with these players and talk to everything they do in All-American fashion. Great coaching staff. Wilkins unable to control the ball initially. Now has it. Hands off to Lucas. Brian Lucas, number 36. Lucas gets it back, and it's Brendan Kelly with it. Pace was furious in the first quarter, Tom. Kelly into Iron, and Iron bounce shot is wide. <laughs> that was another chance. They've had two chances in a row that they could have put the ball in the hole, and they've missed both of them. Sure. Uncharacteristic of Hopkins. Syracuse scored the last three goals. Hopkins had a 4-2 lead about midway through the first quarter. And the Orange, after a timeout, came back, made 4-3 immediately, and eventually took the lead with one second left in the first quarter. Paul Gates, Zilberti, and Marichek, the three that made the big difference there with the scores. Both teams slowing down, Tom. The heat of the day, it's a lot hot out, hotter out there than you might imagine, even though it's a cool day. That field reflects heat like an AstroTurf field would. And both teams now slowing down a little bit. That racehorse start tired out both teams. Palem over the midfield stride. Are we going to have an offside call here? I believe we are against Syracuse. Palem will argue the point, but still over there. It's not his responsibility to stay on sides. It's the far side midfielder or defenseman, and it wasn't picked up by Syracuse. And that happens a lot when the goalie goes off sides. It doesn't happen a lot to Hopkins because, again, fundamentally, they just don't make the mistakes. But a team that likes to run and push will make that mistake a lot of times when the goalie pushes upfield. So the ball will go over to Johns Hopkins, trailing Syracuse 5-4 to four as Roy Simmons Jr. looks on. This team, this field, very, very fast. As I said, they actually mowed the grass as if it needed any mowing prior to this championship game. With it is John Sheehan for Johns Hopkins. Sheehan number seven, the point man on the attack. Closes in, passes to Wilkins, and Wilkins shot is by John Ciccaroni, or I'm sorry, by Schluter. Phil Schluter. Phil Schluter got his stick on it, and out of bounds it goes. Nice check by Schluter. You don't have to come out real hard on it. You just, just make the stick check, and that's all you need to do. Man down defense, very effective for Syracuse. They, they brag about their defense, and well, they should, because everybody talks about the offense. This defense is plenty good. Only 19% of the time do the teams with the extra man score against Syracuse. That's unbelievable. Wilkins does. Races it maybe to 20% with that goal. It ties up the game at five. Mark Stoker was not very aggressive out in that point as we look at Palem. Palem saying, come on, guys, give me a little stick on that shot. That's twice that they've, they've scored from that corner on extra man. They must have gotten a weakness. Watch. Right from that side, not a very aggressive by the defenseman, Mark Stoker, and a good hard shot to the far pipe beats Palem. But that's two goals on extra man, Tom, as we look at Wilkins on the sideline. Two goals on extra man from that very same corner. Obviously, Hopkins sensing a weakness. This is Dave Petromalo. I haven't called his name very much the last few minutes. He'll go ahead and take the shot. Hopkins will retain control as they had a man back there closest to the end line. Petromalo, I guess, took it. What the heck? Take it. Well, he saw that. He's no dummy. He saw the backup on the offense, so he shot high, knowing that if he hit right inside the pipe, he'd get a goal. If he missed, he had the backup covered. This is number one. Play call from the sideline. Banana, one, two, and Panetta engineers the goal to put the Blue Jays on top. Matt Panetta's third goal of the game. They have not been able to handle him, obviously, and he's made the same move, pretty much. It's a power move close into the crease, Tom. That's his forte. And Syracuse tried to slide a little bit too late. Watch the slide come a little too late. Foot slow right there. Slide comes in. You can't use a stick check against a guy as big and strong as Panetta. He'll go right through the stick check. But the legs were a little slow in the initial defense to give Panetta a head start on that run. You don't want to get yourself caught in a foot race when your guy is that strong, that powerful. You want to lock him out, get the stick against his chest, and push him away from his offense. Matt Panetta, he's from the New York hotbed of lacrosse, and that's why he wants to play so very well today against Syracuse. Two straight goals for Hopkins. And Syracuse threatening to make it a clean sweep of the lacrosse titles this year for the 
upstate New Yorkers, Herkimer Community College won in the JUCO division, and Hobart College won for the 10th time in a row, I believe, in Division Three. Hobart sensation. Of course, down the high school ranks, who's better than West Genesee? They won 165 straight games this year before they lost one. Tremendous program up there that feeds these New York teams. Greg Burns, number 14 in the orange uniform, carrying the ball now against Chickaroni. Syracuse on attack in the Hopkins zone, trailing now, 6-5. See where the matchups are. Uh, Zalberti's got Petromala. He's got that assignment. So Dwan's on Marichek. I think Marichek's got to go ahead and try to push Billy Dwan a little bit. They'd like to run Mer uh, Petromala. Now, that's what they're going to do here. Just run Petromala, get his legs burned up a little bit. He's doing a lot of work out there, Petromala is. Look at Zalberti saying, get out of my way. I'm going to work the legs of Petromala, try to diminish his effectiveness as the game goes on. Zalberti carrying it all the way back to the corner. Petromala frustrating him like he did Redfern. A North Carolina catch it away. He can do it like nobody else. Wow. Not the great matchup for leg burning. Zalberti's not a speedster, so that didn't work out too well. He needs to make him run away from Petromala. This is Brian Volker with it. And the shot is taken by Jamie McNeely in the save made by Palo. All right, things are a little bit unsettled, Tom, and this is where they really shine. This is where Syracuse would like to go ahead and make two passes and a good shot. 3.28 and running here in the first half. 6-5, Johns Hopkins, and it's still 6-5. After the shot from Dan Kay, he is a save by Kessler. A lot of the last shots by Syracuse are going right into the gut of that quick uh, Kessler. They've got to be finer with their shooting. Billy Dwan breaks in. Pass to Dressel. Dressel back to Imer. And it's 7 to 5. Great passing by Hopkins on the run. That's exactly the way Syracuse likes to do it. And again, I talked to the head about everybody talking about slowing down for Hopkins. They don't have to slow down. They can play with anybody. Watch these skills. They'll take what they get. They know that the passing has to come when the slide is there. Panetta makes one little juke move, comes in, freezes the goalie with that fake. And then once the goalie commits, Payton commits in the air, he goes right underneath his feet. Sensational play. Watch. He'll freeze Panetta or, or Payton high. Payton was up and out of the goal, and then he just dished it underneath his feet. How about Panetta for taking charge? Four goals for Matt Panetta. Three goals in a row for Johns Hopkins after they trailed in this game. Five to four. It's now seven five. So you had a 4-2 Hopkins lead, three goals for Syracuse. Then you had a 5-4 Syracuse lead, three goals for Johns Hopkins. Syracuse still trying to be uh, up-tempo, pushing the tempo, and again, they leave those opportunities for a team, and Hopkins is just vital, or taking advantage of them, rather. Off the face off the score again for Josh Hopkins, and it's Frank Kelly, and it's an eight to five. Blue Jay lead. I expect Syracuse to take a timeout here and get things under control. Hopkins just taking charge. Four straight goals. Kelly came right down against a very flat-footed defense. Watch this. He takes off. Syracuse a little flat-footed. Nobody getting in good position. He'll come right down. Nobody picks him up until too late. And Palem, who's been shell-shocked of late, does not make the save. Watch how nicely placed the shot is to the far pipe right inside of Palem. This team is hot. Eight to five, the Blue Jays on top with 2.58 left in the first half. We're counting down the first half. Eight five, Johns Hopkins. We have an excellent crowd and a beautiful, a perfect weather day here at College Park, Maryland. This is the takeaway artist, McCabe. Now they switch off. Iim gets around his man for a moment, trying to cut in. Now cuts back. Iim has it taken away. Nice defensive pressure that time by Mike, by Mark Stouffer. Stouffer picked him up on the slide. He got bumped off. McCabe had him initially, and Stouffer almost got. His legs tied up again underneath him. He's not as mobile as McCabe. Bob Persing with it for Syracuse. Both are trying to cut off Paul Gate and not getting the ball. Now he's open. You've got to give it to him. Paul Gate running for the ball. Give it up or you're going to be in trouble. Finally. And Gate controls. 120 and counting. Syracuse just wants to stem the tide here, maybe get a goal or two before halftime. What a great first half by Hopkins. Unbelievable. You don't feel like a dominating. All of a sudden, you look up, there's three goals ahead. Paul Gate, working against Brian Volker, gets it back to Gary Gate. Against Petromala. And this is Rodney Dumpson against the short stick. Russell. And Pat Russell. Everybody else has a long stick out there, Tom. Russell has the only short stick, so that's an advantage for Dumpson. He could take that, try to get a good shot. Zolberti being bothered. Zolberti with a nice pass for Maritek, who couldn't control it. And the right idea, Kessinick, he's checked off the ball. Nobody in the goal right now, Tom. If they can make two passes, they're going to have an easy shot. 
now he is back. Pesevic back with 33 seconds and counting in the first half. Loose ball finally picked up by Paul Gates. I think they're cutting out a little too fine. You've got guys like Paul right there who can shoot hard from that side. There he goes. And scores. Paul Gates. He just wound up and fired a cannon shot into the net. Well, that's exactly what I mean. Why bother to be too fine when you're got guys in there with cannon shots? Let them take the cannon. There's Zimmerman. Just hoping they could get a little stick on him. Watch the ball comes out, finally controlled by Paul Gay. He'll come over and say, give me that ball. He comes in, a soft defense on him. He says, hey, I can shoot from here. He's got a tremendous high-velocity shot from there. Nobody picks him up. Wing, though, right past the shoulder of Kessenich. And with that kind of velocity, you've got to get the ball in his stick and let him take those outside shots. You know, if I'm the goaltender, I, I just duck. When I see him wind up for that, you shot. hardly even have time to duck. You, you stand there, and by the time you're worried, the ball's behind you. 24 seconds left in the first half. Let's go Great goal is like Kessnick, of course, love that matchup. Four goals on seven shots, not a bad percentage, huh? Takes out control by John Tompkins, Resin Pollock, and a whistle. John Hopkins coach Don Zimmerman pacing the sideline. 16 seconds left in the first half. His play will be back on. Hopkins in control. And this is Matt Panetta. Matt Panetta will start the offense. I suspect they're going to look for a slide, and he'll pass the ball, and somebody else will take the shot. Panetta running his man into a pick, coming back the other way, loses control of the ball with three seconds left, and that'll do it for the first half of play. A little bit of rough play right down there in the crease area. John Hopkins into the field, but no penalty, and we reach the end of the very entertaining first half. The underdogs, the Blue Jays of Johns Hopkins, lead the defending national champions from Syracuse. Johns Hopkins eight, Syracuse six. The second half is just moments away, so stay with us here on ESPN. The College Park. It's the men's Division One lacrosse championships with Johns Hopkins leading Syracuse 8-6 at halftime on time Mees with Steve Ellsbaugh and Lee let's take a look at the stats from the first half of play and you'll see that Johns Hopkins is doing a very good job especially in the area of faceoffs, and that leads to ball control quite a shocker grab balls you can see is dead even that controls the uh, tempo of the transition game Faceoffs dominated by Hopkins shots a little bit on the Hopkins edge and of course saves Kesnick coming up big time extra man both teams real effective. Nobody's missed yet. Now, the nation's number one lacrosse fan is in attendance here today at Bird Stadium. Vice President of the United States, Dan Quayle, whose son Tucker, we understand, is a high school lacrosse player in the state of Virginia. He's here taking in the action today. Just saw Dickie Dell, a coach of Maryland, and he's uh, looking at his son as a pretty good prospect. All right, we hope the Vice President enjoys what he sees today as we look at the Syracuse bench, a new feeling for them. First time they've ever trailed entering the third quarter of the season. On the other hand, Johns Hopkins in the meeting of these two teams back on March 4th, held Syracuse scoreless in the third period. It was 3 nothing in the first in the third period of that first matchup. I would definitely say this third quarter will tell us a lot about the mental attitude of the Syracuse team. We talked before, Tom, about how will this team react if they're behind. We don't know, but we'll find out. Brad and Resin Puff to start the second half. Still a fight for it. It is out of bounds to whom? And they are pointing for John Hopkins. And that was Gary Gate on the side again. I've got to say, as we look at uh, Coach Simmons, Gary Gate looks a little lethargic to me, Tom. He doesn't have the intensity. He's sort of playing, going through the motions, waiting for something to happen. This guy makes things happen. They need Gary Gate to step up and start playing with his brother. So John Hopkins controls the ball to start the second half, and this is Jeff Eim working against number 32, Mark Stolfer. Eim gets a pick, but Stolfer gets around it. Pick was from Panetta. I will have to pass off. Panetta with a great first half. They've switched now, put McCabe against Panetta. Brendan Kelly shot to save. McCabe is more of a, right there with the ball now, McCabe is a takeaway player. He'll strip a player, and Stouffer is more of a position player. They started with Stouffer, the position man, against Panetta. Panetta got four goals. Now you've got McCabe, the better athlete, the quicker stick, matched up against the fabulous Matt Panetta. Salem with the ball. Passes out to his left to Pat McCabe. McCabe, long pass intended for Andrew Boland. He gets it, and he's on the run. Here comes Boland. Didn't play too much in that first half. You're going to have to get some fresh legs in. There's a lot of heat out there, and both teams really burned up in the first period. Marichek's pass intended for number 19, Paul Gates. Misconnects, and here comes Hopkins. This is Dressel. Dressel's got iron on his right. Takes the shot, and the save by Palin. It's out of the crease area, but scooped up by McCabe. Phelan's a good goalie, not a great goalie like Kessenick, so he's got to come up with some great saves in the second half. Gate behind the back, and the shot's a goal by Greg Burns, 
and give the assist to Paul Gate with a nice behind-the-back pass to Burns. Paul Gate is having the game of his career, quite possibly, and this is the Canadians behind the back. They don't have a right hand, but they don't need one. Right behind the back, that's as good as having an offhand right into the strip of Burns, and that made Kessinick go from the right pipe to the left pipe, right here. Now Kessinick is moving from the right pipe to the left pipe. Right by the time he gets there, that rocket shot finds the mark. So it's 8-7, Johns Hopkins on top, and they will not hold Syracuse scoreless in the third quarter of the national championship game. You will wipe out that stat right now. 13.30 left to go in the third quarter. Tom Means and Lee Felsmo from College Park, Maryland. And we're sure we have a record crowd here for the finals today under beautiful conditions in the Chesapeake Bay country. Tom, you talked about the halftime of each team and what it would be like in the locker room. You asked me, was, was uh, Simmons a yeller? Was he getting on his team? I bet you there was more yelling in the team that had the three-goal lead in Hopkins' locker room than there was in the Syracuse locker room for the half. That team, our score now. I'm sorry, that team is just very intense and yeah. very, very dedicated to what they have to do at Hopkins. I'm sure the players are used to hearing it from the coaches. <laughs> he just is, he plays every game as if he's in the game. Zimmerman does on the sideline. It's the old scenario you've seen the commercial with a football team that's up by 21 points at halftime and the coach is yelling and screaming at him and one guy speaks up. He says, hey, can't you help me? You're ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, here comes Syracuse on the run. Zelberti has it behind the net, gets it over to Burns. Billy Dwan doing a fantastic job on Zelberti. Dwan, a real fabulous year against, a great year against the number one or two attackman right behind Petromala. Billy Dwan, number 28. Dan Kay, a junior from Homer, New York with it. Circles all the way from one side of the field to the other and gets it over to Burns. This is Jonathan. 8-7. Johns Hopkins leading Syracuse for the moment. Earl Hall. Petromalacek right there against Marichek. Marichek's really been frustrated this game. He has not been much of a factor. Got the one garbage goal, but he wants the ball a little bit more than that. Greg Burns wants to cut in. Good matchup against Ciccaroni. Zilberti's open for the moment, has no shot. Dwan will not let him rest. That's Billy Dwan's strategy. He will go ahead there and beat him. Try to take the ball away. And now Syracuse with possession of over one minute on the offense. That gets to be on a real long side for Syracuse, not for other teams, but this is a long series for them. Earl Hall, looking, looking, looking. Passes back out to Cahey. Gate Brothers taking a rest right now. This is the second unit. They'd like to go ahead and work the defense a little bit, loses the ball. They'd like to have Marichek, when he does get the ball, go ahead and run Petromala a little bit, much like Zilberti tried to do in the first half. Tire him out. Burns with it behind the net. Ciccaroni on him, trying to force him wide, and does so. Burns wants to turn back the other way and get a shot away. Won't do it. Turn back. Zilberti in front, and a score. Tobinacci is a transfer from the Naval Academy right over the horizon. He's no stranger. Good talent. And you can tell right now, Tom, that Simmons told his players, slow down a little bit, get the good opportunities, and we can beat this fantastic goalie, Kessinick. And there you go against Boku. He came in. A beautiful feed from behind from the great Z. And right in next to Kessinick, two goals in a row from the Orange Group. So Joe Bonacci's first goal of the game ties it up at 8 with 11 one left to go here in the third quarter, and they love it. Here in College Park. Tom, again, the tempo, the one thing I can guarantee you was talked about in the Orange Man halftime was that, look, you don't have to rush. You don't have to score in the next 30 seconds. Calm the ball down enough for you to get your good shot. You guys are good finishers. You can score, but give yourself the opportunity with some good shots. Ball goes out of bounds, and it will be possession to Syracuse. Coach Zimmerman of John Hopkins protests, but to no avail. All right, a real good series here to start off the third period. One that we all know is the Achilles heel. Watch the hidden ball trick. Watch, this could be the hidden ball trick. Both Gate brothers standing together. One might pretend he's got it. The other one may take it. 19, Paul has the ball. Yep. Now they're both moving around like they each have it. And nope. Hopkins is not fooled. Not fooled, no hidden ball trick here. Paul with the great first half. Turning the ball. Yes. Paul Gate moves in, moves in, got a shot, and shoots wide. And he's holding his head like, oh my goodness, I had the lead goal on my stick. And I shot it wide. When they take the time, they make it look real easy, Tom. A big mismatch against Vocal, and that strong player, Paul Gate, went right by him and literally missed the 36 square feet, or else that would have been the third goal of the quarter. Meanwhile, Marichek is mishandling the pass from Zolberti. Goes out of bounds with the Johns Hopkins ball when we return. 10.39 left. Here's Johns Hopkins take over. 
And so they get up to Billy Dwan, and we start back the other way. Nice start, though, for Syracuse. They could have had three goals in a row had they put that one on the, on the net. Now let's see what Hopkins has done, if there's any changes for the second half. Lucas. Pass back to Brendan Kelly. Penalty flag on the field. Kelly's shot bounces up and hits. Taylor makes a nice stop, and let's see what the penalty is. Offside call against Johns Hopkins. Here's a shot, and Kelly, nobody on him. So Brendan just comes in right in. He'll wait for the defense to come out in front of him. Hard shot against Pene or, uh, Palum. Palum comes up with a save. Offside on the ice. Again, it's very 11, important John for Palum. What's the call here, Tom? Offside on Syracuse. And that was with possession, so there will be a penalty. 30 seconds. Man up opportunity. Good break for Hopkins. So Hopkins with the extra man in an 8-8 game for the national championship. Ten minutes to go in the third quarter, and this is Panetta. And that is a goal by Jay Clark. Well, they mixed things up. First two goals they scored from out front on that corner, and this time they were in a 3-3. They snuck Panetta back to get attention. Watch Panetta get the attention, and then as soon as the defense slides to him, Jay Clark, number 19, slid into that hole. He slid in that area that was vacated and just dumped it past Taylor. Right here. Attention by Panetta. Here comes Jay Clark slashing into that open area. And if Panetta finds the scene, that was a call play all the way on this extra man. Halem, a little bit sorry that he didn't get in front of that ball. First shot of the halftime and the first goal. Hopkins again still in control. Hopkins and goal, the extra man 19, pays Jay off Clark. again for Johns Hopkins just Number seconds after the penalty was called. A team that was absolutely uh, worthless in the first game against these two teams. They are 0 for 5 in the first quarter extra man. They are on fire this game. And number 43, Mike McGee, who came in for Pratt late in the first half after the dominating faceoff by Reggie Pollock. Now he is controlling for the great Arnton. Gary Gate with a number 22 cuts inside. Petromala gets the shot away. Petromala bothered him enough, however, to put the shot off the mark and a whistle. I believe we're going to have an in and out call. In, in the crease by uh, Gate. Uh, Gary came in so close. He was really banking on all or nothing. He was banking on getting that goal. He knew he was too close. Tried to pull back, but Petromala gave him a little extra push. There's Gary Gate. He needs to wake up to put this game ahead as far as uh, Syracuse fans are concerned. I haven't heard much from the Gary Gate, the great air gate of the twin brothers. Yeah, he had that shot in the semifinals last year against the University of Pennsylvania, and Quaker goalie is probably still wondering where the heck that came from. Electrified the crowd, and Tom, the amazing thing was he didn't do it once, he did it twice. Once is amazing, twice is, as my daughter would say, more than amazing. <laughs> Well, he tried to do it against Maryland in the uh, semifinal game here at College Park. It didn't succeed, and as I understand, he got in a little bit, as I remember, got a little bit of a shouting match with the Maryland defender. Well, the Maryland defender was Mike uh, McKenna. Goldton. Yeah, he's a little bit of a vocal type. Here comes Marichek. As Kesson extends, get back in the goal. The pass in front, and a penalty flag is down. Syracuse couldn't connect on the passing. Let's see what happens here. I'm going to guess Resin Pollock's going to be called for that penalty. It's going to be a slash on him. Here's the play. Good transition from Syracuse. Looking to move it down. Watch Resin Pollock come sliding in. Resin Pollock's got to stop that play. Look at the all or nothing check on Resin Pollock. Runs him over, slashes him in the head, and they almost got the shot and goal anyway. Resin, Resin Pollock was called for the slash. Now it's extra man Syracuse. And in case you wonder, that is why they wear helmets in the sport of lacrosse. No kidding. That was uh, the call that you were under for a while. Tom, the last time they had an extra man situation, so Birdie came around and tried to force it in from the wing. They'd be better off going to the guns out front. Here's the one-for-one for, one for Syracuse. They've got a lot of finishers. That's one of them, Gary Gate. That's one of them, Paul Gate. And the other one's on the far side right there. That's Marichek. Marichek makes the shot to Zolberti. Zolberti in front to Gate, and it's a score. Deflects in, gives the goal to Gary Gate. He's on the board, and that'll make him feel a lot better, but how about the nonchalance Gary Gate shows? He hasn't seemed interested so far in this game to me. Watch here, they move the ball around, right back out from Z. Z-Man sees Gary on the soft side of the zone, and Gary Gate just puts on the Jets. Bounce shot. Again, that turf is almost like AstroTurf. Very hard dirt. Gary Gate, first goal of the game. Petromala tried to slide in to make the save there. I believe it deflected off somebody's stick, but it still had enough steam to get up in the net. Tied the game at nine. And again, we're going to have Mike McGee. I guess he'll take the face-offs for the rest of the rest of the way for Roy Simmons Jr. Well, against Resin Pollock. Resin Pollock's got to be getting a little bit tired, but here's, <laughs> I say that, he comes up with the face-off. And here he comes breaking in. 
the Dressel. Dressel couldn't control. Maybe he wasn't expecting that pass. Look at the stick work from Gary Gate. Gary plays the wings against Syracuse so confident they use two of the regular minis, the Gate brothers, on the wings, not long sticks. This is the other one. This is Paul. Paul Gate working against Brian Volker. Paul Gate gets by Volker, cuts inside, almost put it in from a prone position, and another penalty flag is down. 8-24 left in the third quarter, and we're right where we began. Nine for Johns Hopkins, nine for Syracuse. We'll be back with more great action in a moment. Park, Maryland, on the campus of the University of Maryland. Brian Volker will be in the box for 30 seconds for holding, and that extra man attack for Orange. For Syracuse. This is an explosive offense. What they do here, the amazing thing is, this is your six best offensive players, Tom, and this is the starting midfield and the starting attack. That simple. Most teams have to mismatch and get some guys on the bench, the best offense. The shot faked by Marichek. And Gate, the shot is the same. Wow, Gary Gate's bullet was corralled by Quint Kesnick, who's doing the rain dance around the crease area with Zoberti on his back. In the crease, Goalie was in the... Oh, no, Zoberti was in there. Bad call, I think. The referee, was, I mean, Kesnick was back in. I think that was a, a bad call. We'll see the replay. Did he if try I'm to right, him in there? If I'm right, the goalie stepped back in. Kesnick, now watch this shot, first of all. The only way this shot didn't go in is because it hit the stick of Kesnick. He stood tall. But now watch him go around one whole time. He goes out of the crease. That means he can't go back in. Now watch, if you keep going, he'll put his hand down, and yeah. he'll touch in the crease. There. Right That's there. an infraction. It should have been Syracuse ball. But as we so often point out, the officials do not have the benefit of instant replay. He was right there on top of the play that I'm surprised he missed it. Wilkins can't control the pass, and Syracuse will get it back. So a moot point, perhaps. Or yep, they got to clear the ball, and uh, that'll give them the possession again. So far, three goals for Syracuse in that ill-fated third quarter against one on an extra man play for Hopkins. Syracuse, things going their way, Tom, but they need to get a little breathing room. They'd like to come out of this quarter with at least a goal lead. Penalty, of course, is up. It was only a 30-second penalty against Volker, so the sides are playing even. And of course, if you're Hopkins, you want to just keep it close. They're doing a great job. They, too, would like to go ahead and fight through this third quarter, come out with at least a one-goal lead. Pass is controlled by Paul Gate. Now drops it on his own and has to go back and get it. He's had a sensational day. The last move he made because the uh, penalty just pulled over two people. Kept the left stick, left stick in the left hand, rather. Here will do it again. Gets by Volker, comes in and shoots wide to the last. All or nothing play, just like Gary had. That'll be ball into the Hopkins possession. Well, it's a good play, though, Tom, because it's a mismatch against Volker. He's eating Volker up. Volker, the young kid, watch this. The power of the 200-pound Paul Gate. He comes in all or nothing for that shot and literally just missed the 6 by 6 or else he would have had a goal there as well. That's a good gamble as we look at Simmons on the sideline. And Johns Hopkins will take control of the ball when play starts in, and here we go with 7-11 left in the third quarter. Pace of the game has slowed down in the third quarter from what it was in the second. But I think if there was any message to the halftime speech by Simmons, it was that you can play it slowed down. Don't get frustrated. I seem to think that they're a lot less frustrated with the tempo in this half. Juan and Kessinick playing catch with it now for Johns Hopkins. With this clearing, they have an extra man because the goal is out of the goal. So that's why there's an extra man for the clearing team. Hopkins, in this case, little or no uh, move to take the ball away from Syracuse. Kelly gets it over to Johnny Wilkins to Panetta. This is the takeaway, Artis McCabe. They've, missed, they've mixed up the defense now. Don't forget, this is a new guy on Panetta. Let's see how he does. Panetta gets a pick from Iim. Panetta cuts in. Jeff Iim put the pick on Pat McCabe. It gave Panetta just enough room to wind up and get some leverage. Panetta's getting my attention. I didn't think he was that dominant, but he sure is taking and ripping apart this defense. It's his fifth goal of the game, and he's done it against the two best defenders. First, Stoper, now McKay. McKay's got a good stick. He's not a position player. Watch. So he gets out of position. He misses the stick check, and then all of a sudden, Panetta is too close, and he beats Halem one-on-one. -on -one. Well, Johns Hopkins, 10-9 leaders right now. 6.24 left in the third quarter. And Panetta's only a sophomore, so he's going to be around for a couple more years. Back in there to take the face off for Syracuse is Kurt Pratt against Dresden Pollock. So maybe Roy Simmons is going to alternate his face off men. And Syracuse initially has possession in the person of Steve Scaravazzino. But he can't hang on. And Hopkins looking to come back up with it. And they do. And this is Billy Guan. 
I've been showing you the great team concept, uh, Tom. Many times in this game, even though the numbers are heavily in favor of Hopkins, many times Syracuse has gotten the face off but just haven't stayed with it long enough. Hopkins never gives up and consequently come up with it more often than not. Hopkins in the Syracuse zone. Jeff Hine against Stouffer over there on the far side. I'm trying to cut in past Mark Stouffer. Didn't work. Resin Pollock makes it back to Greg Kelly. Well, he's got a good match here against the short stick. Kelly takes the shot. Doesn't get through on goal. It's picked up by Pat McCabe. McCabe still pressured behind that long pass. And it's corralled very nicely there by Dan Cahey. They got something going. They push it a little bit. Hopkins drops in, though. Cuts off the transition. Five minutes and five seconds left, third quarter, clock run. Maryland, rather, Syracuse and John Hopkins for the national title. Blue Jays lead at 10 to 9 from College Park, Maryland. TNT midfield's in there, that explosive midfield, the Gates. And, of course, Dumpson. Marichek taking his time, looking over the situation. Good matchup for uh, Marichek against McNeely. He gets in, gets his footing, shoots, and passing it quick for that. Again with a save. That's why he's first team All-American. It's just tough to beat. I think the biggest difference in this game, maybe in the bottom line so far, is that Kesnick is making the big saves. Kalem is not a great goalie against a good one. Johns Hopkins with it. Jeff Heim and substitutions come in for both teams. Brendan Kelly and Wilkins in there along with Lucas. I think a little bit of the heart of the Syracuse defense is gone because uh, they're surprised, I'm sure, that Panetta and company have handled them so easily. This is not a high scoring offense. Panetta again shoots and his save is made or maybe he hit the pipe. I'll take that a pipe. That was a pipe shot again. Panetta beating the offense almost at will. 3.59 left in the third quarter. Our score, John Hopkins 10, Syracuse 9, back to College Park in a moment. Less than three minutes now left in the third quarter. Don Zimmerman's Johns Hopkins Blue Jays lead Roy Simmons, Syracuse Orangeman, 10 to 9. And they've really, again, I know full well how good this Hopkins coaching staff is, but they continue to shock me and impress me every year. I think they're a little bit on the light side of the talent on this field, but they are controlling the game. This is Brian Lucas. He comes in, shoots, and it's 11 to 9. Lucas with the goal. Palem is really talking to himself. He's looking at the sideline, giving the coaching staff an excuse. He's saying it was tipped, it was tipped. Simmons has got a real tough decision here, Tom. He may have to pull Palem. He's not effective at all today. Watch this shot. Come right down, Lucas, that beats his defense easily hauled, and just shoots hard against Palem. Not a great shot. A shot that Palem's got to save if you're playing in the championship game. His seventh goal of the season. A lot of pressure. We'll have to see what Simmons does. He's going to be pressured to maybe make a change in goalie. I'm not so sure. Nobody's warming up at the time. Brian Lucas goal unassisted. Gives Hopkins a two-goal lead with less than two minutes, 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. But remember, Syracuse is so explosive on offense. This is Paul Gate against the short stick. Double teamed is Gate. Trying to find somebody open. Gets it over to Greg Burns. Now Syracuse has to pull back for a second. This is Rodney Dumpson. Dumpson looks like he wants to shoot. Gets in there. He's double teamed. Controls again, and Dumpson does a nice job getting a shot away. It's wide, but Syracuse should maintain possession, and they do. Dumpson's forcing things a little bit. Uh, you ought to take your time. Again, you've got two great shooters out there in the Gate Brothers, Gary and Paul, and Marichek coming out. Uh, Jim Egan going in for Marichek, so they're looking for a little bit more ball control. Egan started on this team last year, Tom, for the national champion team of Syracuse. So they don't lose anything with Egan in there. What they get is a guy who can control the ball a little bit better, not force it like the young Marichek might. Zolberti, they call him Z-Man. He's trying to get open behind the net. Paul Gate has it. Good matchup. He's been beating Volker all day. He might do it again here. Volker wants him to go to his left. Double team is Gate. But his twin brother, Gary, comes up with it. Nice fake by Gary Gate. Runs his man Petromale into a pick, but Volker's with him. Good defense by Volker. The crowd appreciating the way that Volker and Petromale are playing the gate. It's the best against the best. 
Forget we're down here in the south. They want Hopkins to show that they get they deserve a little bit of respect against these fabulous gay brothers who get all the media attention. Dunson comes in. Can't forget him. He shoots and it is saved by Kesnick as he got part of the stick on it. And Kesnick hustles to get possession for John Hopkins. I'll tell you that they had a weird angle on that, Tom, but I thought the ball went in the goal. I did too for a second. I thought it went out the far net. Let's see if we can see it here. Good possession for Syracuse, almost two minutes worth. Watch the ball come in, not on that shot, but on the other. This shot right here, as we rolled it far, farther forward, I think it came back and hit the net right behind him, right here on this shot. Right, no, nope, it look like it. An optical illusion, optical illusion. Anyhow, Johns Hopkins gains control, but under a minute to go now, Again. third quarter, 44 seconds to be exact. Again. And Hopkins has got to be ecstatic. They've maintained their two-goal lead throughout most of this third quarter. Zimmerman barking out instructions, keeping the intensity level high on his team. They've scored two straight goals and refusing to give in to Syracuse. Syracuse with a lot of pressure now. Two goals down. This is a new thing for them. Oh, Ciccaroni fast to Kastanik, and the pressure for Kastanik to carry it out. Syracuse has got a golden opportunity now with 22 seconds left in the quarter. Sure would love to pick up one here. They came into the third period down by two. And all that work and that explosive start goes for naught if they don't pick up one here. Yeah, it was 8-6, it was and then Syracuse came out to tie it up at 8-8. It was tied up at 9-9. And the Blue Jays have scored the last two. You can see what they're going to work up. They've got Egan, the control man, in there. Now, now here comes Paul Gate. He wants to take that challenge of going against Let's Volker. Go. He's been successful all day, and that's what they're going to put their money on. Gate working in, working in, working in. Can't get it. Gets out to Zolperti, who can't control it. Ten seconds left in the quarter. Kesnick is out of the net. He's back there trying to defend. Five seconds left in the quarter. Ciccarone hits the turf. Clock rolls, and that'll do it. That'll end the third quarter as Henry's player again. And the crowd here in Maryland, primarily rooting for Johns Hopkins, loves it. The score, Johns Hopkins 11, Syracuse 9. We'll be back with the fourth quarter and maybe more. Who knows? In a moment. Welcome back to Bird Stadium on the campus of the University of Maryland in College Park and the fourth quarter of the national championship game of college lacrosse division one. The Blue Jays of Johns Hopkins 11, Syracuse 9. Tom Means with Lee Helsmo and here's a look at the stats, Lee. Hopkins doing a great job of keeping Syracuse away from their transition game. Ground balls now moving in slightly in Syracuse's favor. Faceoff still Hopkins with the edge, but not as much. They've made a change there, and this gentleman, number 43, Mike McGee, has pulled it back to within reach for Syracuse. I tell you, when you look at shots overall, the big number that Roy Simmons wanted, Tom, was 55 shots. He thinks in the first game they only shot about 30 times. He needed 55 shots. They're not on that pace. Gate is on the run. They're on 30 shots so far. They have shot 30 so far through the third period. So that's a little bit less than what Roy wants. He wants more shots. So if they crank it up here, they feel they need to shoot again 55 times to beat the great Kessinick. And there's Roy Simmons Sr., the father of the head coach in the Orange of Syracuse. Back to action on the field, Jim Egan. There's old Bernie in front. The shot, the quick one by Dumpson is a save by Kessinick. He stays with the ball so well today. Beautiful job against a nice uh, feed and go. And here's Paul. Paul Gate Kessler to help block that one off with his defense. Volker has really gotten himself together. He got beat so easily by Paul early on, but staying right with him, doing a nice job. Ciccaroni and Volker helping to clear the ball for Johns Hopkins. Ciccaroni wants to pass it. Goes back to Kessler. Hopkins has this game right where they want it. It's been a great game. It's been a great game. And ought to get the government seal of approval with the vice president here today. I think everybody's happy. Look at the crowd. It's, it's going to be a record crowd, I can tell you. Conditions in the weather are perfect. And here is Lucas, who scored just a few moments ago in the third quarter. Pass into the zone of Syracuse to Russell. Russell gets it to Iam. Goaltender calls the pick. Ein gets free, and the pass is 
Intercepted by Syracuse. Make it a nice play there with Rob Person coming back into the net. Good thing he did because Palin gambled. Palin was way out of the goal. If that feed had gone through, it would have been an easy shot and a goal for Hopkins, but Pershing cut it off with Palin well outside the net. McKay works in with that long stick. This is Alberti. Alberti, a little or no factor. Credit Billy Dwan. He's taken Alberti out of his effective role as playmaker for this team. Two guys after that defense. We talk about Petramala. He's everywhere, mostly on a gate or two. And then, of course, Dwan against the great Z-Man. Greg Burns moves into the attack box with Syracuse. They might be trying to exploit this, Tom. Burns, who's a pretty good player, against Ciccaroni, the maybe the number three guy on the Hopkins roster as defenseman goal. Burns played nicely by Ciccaroni. Down he slips, and Ciccaroni looks to take control of the ball. Burns is back up to get it, though. Nice play to Burns. It dumps it. He scores! Rodney Dumpson. Touched the margin to one again, 11 to 10. What a game. Rodney Dumpson, pretty much a guy who carries the water for the Gates boys. He really sets up all the plays, does all the legwork, and Rodney's in the right place here. Good hustle by this team with Greg Burns losing the ball at first to Ciccaroni, help from Paul Gate, and then Burns pushes it out, gets control. Now he's looking. He sees Dumpson all the way across. Dumpson takes one step and puts everything he has behind it. A nice, hard shot. Rodney Dumpson's goal brings the Orange of Syracuse back within one with loads of time left, 12 minutes, 29 seconds. And face-offs again. Mike McGee in there. He's been effective. Whistle, illegal procedure, the call. The ball will go to Syracuse. Resin Pollock started moving and trying to get an advantage physically there and started moving before the referee blew his whistle. Since McGee came into the game, Syracuse has won seven out of nine face-off. Big tactical move by Syracuse and Simmons and coach John Desco putting McGee in there, and it's paid dividends for him. Syracuse threatening to tie the game now with possession trailing by one, but a nice job by Brian Volker against Paul Gate. However, Gary Gate scoops it up. Hopkins fans wanted to tie it in to get a tie game. The goal by Gary Gate. There's the most dramatic player in the game. Just when you think he's out of sorts and maybe no factor whatsoever, he puts on a show and makes a dramatic shot extending himself all the way. What's this? Volker, tremendous defense, but Gary Gates says, hey, I'm going to get myself in the game. He feels pressure from Petromala, so he leans inside the pressure, dives flat out, wow. and drops it underneath the Kessler's legs. What a play by Gary Gate. Not many guys can do that. And a goal by Gary Gate negates the penalty that was going to be called on Johns Hopkins anyway. So we've got a brand new tilt. We're tied at 11 with 12 for 13 left. Fully extended, fully extended. That's the man, Gary Gate. Two goals. He's coming on strong in the fourth quarter. And another faceoff. Looks like it will be controlled by Syracuse, but no, Resin Pollock rushes back to get it. But he was beaten on the initial play. And that's happened how many times today? Hopkins just doesn't give up. If Syracuse would stay with it for another 20 seconds, they'd get a lot more. Pass almost intercepted by Zolberti, and it will be, I believe, Syracuse ball. We have a time on the field, 56 left, back in a moment. And inside 10 minutes, each team still has their complement of two timeouts that they can use. And we go into overtime. Each team, I understand, will have an additional timeout to use in overtime. Sudden death, five minutes, they switch in each five-minute period and go from the first goal, takes the win, if it goes that long. Well, earlier this year, Hopkins lost his last regular season game in double overtime to Townsend State. Marichek's open. If they find him, now they slide over and get him. Wilkins, he was open for a moment. It's Marichek with the ball now. Wilkins is on him. Back out to Gate. Gate is tripped up by Brendan Kelly, and here comes the flag. Brendan Kelly literally took him off his feet, and that'll be a penalty, a good chance for Syracuse to get the first lead they've had in a long time. Well, Paul Gate, that may be a good penalty, because look at him. If he gets by his man there, uh, that's literally a trip. That was one of the most flagrant trips I've ever seen, but you're right, it could be a good one. Rather than have Paul go one-on-one -on -one with Kessinick, yeah. give him a chance to go ahead and do it in a power play situation. <laughs> Wasn't much chance, though, not to make that call. He just literally stuck his foot out, took down uh, Paul Gate. I looked for the penalty flag. I didn't see it initially. I still raised my eyebrows. The flag was so high up in the air, it took a while for it to land. One of those 20-yard tosses. Yeah. So Gary and Paul Gate, Marichek, and Dumpson and Zilberti, along with Burns, all inside the attack box in the extra man situation for Syracuse. We're tied at 11. Canadians will kill you. That's all finishers. And there's Zilberti. Zilberti with a shot and a goal. They scored. They 
they say he wasn't in the crease area when he took the shot, and Syracuse got the lead. So Birdie sensed that Hopkins was playing the Canadians tough. He felt a little seen. He came in, he faced his wingman the whole way as if he was gonna pass it. Now watch, he'll fake like he's gonna pass it back out, then he'll inside roll, dive out, and lay it into the upper corner. Beautiful play by the Z-man, who really wants to be effective in this game. Look at the inside roll, extends himself all the way, and then right away, Kesslick's crying, he was in the crease. No dice, good play by the Z-man. And his footwork was excellent that time as Zilberti kept himself out of the crease until the shot was taken. Of course, he landed in, but it doesn't matter. The ball was in the goal, and the Syracuse Orangemen have the lead, and a whistle off the faceoff. McGee's in there again for a faceoff against Resin Pollock, and it's going to be a penalty against Resin Pollock for procedure. McGee, totally effective. Maybe the single reason that this team is in the game against the Hopkins team at this point. He's got the possession for the Orangemen back to Syracuse. Don Zimmerman can't believe it. That's the second time in a row Resin Pollock's been called for a legal procedure. Oh, wait a minute. Now they changed the call. They're going to give it to Hopkins. Wait a minute. They're going to call a bench call here. What's happening here? We have some Might have been a substitution, a legal procedure on the bench after that penalty for some reason. And now they give it back to Hopkins. Whatever the reason is, for sure, it's going back to Hopkins. This was on the faceoff, and there, there was a call there before the faceoff. Like, for instance, when the whistle blows, the procedure there normally is that he moves too soon. And as we look at Simmons, a little bit disgusted on that call. He's got a one-goal lead, though, and it was the Z-man, the leader of that defense, or the offense, rather, the captain, the senior, who got the go-ahead goal. Brendan Kelly with it for Johns Hopkins. 12-11, the Blue Jays trail now. Stouffer back on Panetta, and they're going to put all their chips on Panetta. The guy's got five goals. Panetta wheels around, wants to go to his left, gets it clear, shoots and shoots it wide. But I'm as near as to it. Blue Jays will retain possession when we return. 8.09 left to go. Fourth quarter. Syracuse. Fourth quarter, and Johns Hopkins has the man advantage offense. Bob Smith is in the box for a minute for an illegal body check. Right as that whistle sounded. You got to slide and pick up Panetta. He's been too dominant. And he slid and really just knocked him off with a cross check. That cost him a penalty. This will be the first shot, Tom, of Hopkins in the fourth period. And we're halfway through. They haven't taken a shot in the period. That's nice. correct. That's unbelievable. This will be a test, though, for Palin. He's got to come up big. Wilkins, the bouncer, was nowhere near the goal. Hopkins will retain possession. 7-4 left to go in the fourth quarter. And the arms still leading by the slimmest of margins at 12-11. But now this is John Sheehan with it. Sheehan to Wilkins. Chris passing the shot taken quickly there by Mike Morrissey. Loose ball picked up by Wilkins, and Hopkins will start it again. Still with the extra man. She and the bouncer maybe caught everybody, including his own team, off guard. Loose ball in front. Syracuse gathers it up. Credit the defense. They literally body blocked the last two shots by Hopkins. Never got to pay them. And that's what they want to do. Absorb the shots. Save the chance of the ball going by the goalie, Palem, who's not having a great day. Well, both teams now are even up. Syracuse threatening the goal, and Gate is in, and the save by Kessinick against Gary Gate, and here he comes out of the goal for Hopkins. That's why he's the best, I'll tell you. Gary Gate comes right in with a sensational move. Kessinick is there to turn it away. And look at this. We have number 43, Petromala, forced into a turnover by Marichek, and a whistle, and it'll be Syracuse ball. Could have been touching the ball, but I think it was an illegal check. Whatever it was, it was against Billy Dwan, 28. And he comes flying through there. Watch Billy Dwan, 28, right here. He comes flying through, assuming that Egan's going to pick up that ball, or rather Burns, and he's going to have to knock him down with all the force he can muster. Burns didn't connect with the ball. Consequently, the penalty was on Billy Dwan. 6.44 and running, and time becomes more a factor with every tick of the clock. Back to Paul Gate. He's the guy that has done it all day, and that's the matchup they like. He wants to clear out. He wants a little room. Here comes Paul Gate into the zone whistle as he gets a pass into the crease area. Uh, warding off. Tough call. They're being very tough. Very tough against Syracuse. The call is warding off on his off hand. They feel you can hold your hand up and protect the stick. But if you flail it up and push away the check attempt of the other team, that's a warding off call. And that's the call against Paul. It was, a, it was an obvious move. The one that has not been called yet today. Could be a big uh, swing the call in this game should John Hopkins come down and get the tying goal. 
two-goal cushion against Hopkins. Uh, that's what Syracuse is looking for, and Hopkins refusing to relent. Ben Kessidig now is Syracuse doing a good job pressuring in the Hopkins zone. A lot of field out there. You would think there lots of times to be simple to get some of the openings, but sometimes it's not so simple. However, here comes Patrick Russell. Russell gets the pass over to Jay Clark, and this is Wilkins. Plenty of times Russell says, calm down, we're going to make a switch here. He comes off, fresh legs come on. Now we'll set up that attack. Brendan Kelly. Oh, his pass was intended for, for, for Iim, and it was nowhere near Iim, and the ball will go over to Syracuse. You know what's happening, Tom, is that Iim is getting heavy pressure from McCabe. That's the best matchup for Syracuse. They, for a while, put McCabe on the strong Panetta. They got him back on Iim, and, and uh, he's chasing him all over the field, McCabe is. He's giving him such pressure that that time Kelly guessed that Iim was going to come out, but he went in because of the intense pressure from McCabe. McCabe passes back to the crease to Palem. This is where Syracuse can benefit from a little bit of control ball, as it were. Stouffer, second-team All-American. And here comes Palem up the field for Syracuse. The clock running, five minutes, ten seconds and counting. Paul Gates calls for the ball, goes to help out Palem. They don't want Palem to go too far and control that ball. Now the offense has it. This could be a back-breaking goal if they can come up with it. Paul Gate taking his time there, pressured by Brian Volker. Here comes Gate. Gate is open in the crease now. He'll take a check and have to pass it off to Dumpson. Dumpson winds up, shoots. Rodney Dumpson, the biggest game of his life right here. All the attention is going on the Gates. And so when the slide manufactures itself, there he is, Dumpson, all by himself. Watch this, Gate getting a lot of attention. Double team, triple team. He sees Dumpson, he dishes it over to Dumpson, who takes the bad pass, makes one move, and fires the shot for his second goal, I believe, of the day. Second goal for Dumpson. And 16th goal of the season. And Paul Gate, I think, is four and two on the day. Well, now, Don Zimmerman, Johns Hopkins, Blue Jays are under the gun. 4.47 left to play, fourth quarter. Syracuse with a two-goal lead. Resident Pollock trying to wrestle the face off for Hopkins. It's up in the air. Who's going to get possession? Should be Johns Hopkins, and it is. 4.39 left from College Park, Maryland. We'll be back with the remainder of the fourth quarter in a moment. Chip has eluded some By of the... the Z-Man, he had control, lost possession, and this could cost his team. Two minutes, 10 seconds left in fourth quarter time. Syracuse leading at 13 to 11. The Orange will repeat as national champs if they can hold that lead for another two minutes. Wilkins, point blank, And Caleb never saw it. Well, that goes all the way back to the other end of the field when Z-Man, Zoberti, the captain of that offense, lost possession, and the ball came down. There was no way they should have given the ball back to Hopkins so easily. It ended up like this. Wilkins with a great move to the left hand. He's a natural left-hander, and that hard shot found the left pipe. And Payton's looking around for somebody to blame, but as great as he was the two shots before, that's the way he's played most of the day, and that's not up to the championship caliber. I gotta tell you, I thought he was screened that time. Ronnie had one of his own defenders blocking his side. Well, he could have been. Maybe that's why he was holding his hands out to his side, but the ball did come back to the near pipe. A little bit confusing. There's a Pollock fighting for it. And Petramala comes up with it for John Tonkin. Two minutes left to play. Petramala checked off, comes back with it. Crowd in a frenzy here. 150 left in counting. 13 to 12. Syracuse leads it by a goal. And we go back to where Zoberti gave him possession. And Hopkins will jump on every opportunity you give them, and they're jumping on this one. This is the biggest, obviously, the biggest defensive test and the most important for Syracuse. Much of the crowd here at Bird Stadium standing is Brendan Kelly. Control. I got to Wilkins. Wilkins had to go a moment ago, breaks in, has it checked off. Nice play by Syracuse, Steve Scaramuzino. And McCabe comes up with it for the Orange with 120 left. Scaramuzino, the veteran, the senior, who really was looking forward to this game to be his swan song, his championship out of the cross collegiately. 
made a sensational check there, Tom. Stripped the ball of Wilkins after Wilkins had scored to bring it to within one. Record crowd of 23,893 for the final game. The weekend total 44,156. Breaks the prior record by some 13,000. We're under one minute. It's in the hands of Gary Gate. He's got Volker to run with. Timeout called by Syracuse. Not wanting to make any mistakes here with 48 seconds separating Syracuse from their second consecutive national title and fourth in the 1980s. And we'll be back right after these commercial words. Don't go away. 13 to 12, Orange been on top. Maybe is underway. Syracuse trying to hold that one goal lead. They've got the ball, and this is Greg Burns. They just got to keep possession and keep it out of the way of those accurate sticks from Hopkins. There they do. They, they want to put it in the hand of the Gates. And it's Gates against Petromala. That's your best matchup. Petromala. He strips into the ball, but Gate, does he have the presence of mind to get it? It's still loose. 27 seconds left. Looks like a faceoff at the center of the field. Who's going to get it? Dumpson and Johns Hopkins fighting for it. It's still loose. Hopkins controlling. Well, actually, nobody controlling. 15 seconds left. Here comes Hopkins in a whistle. We heard a whistle with 20, with 12 seconds left. And a timeout. Hopkins had control. That's what happened. Panetta. Another terrible mistake by Syracuse. They kept giving the ball back to Hopkins, and Hopkins will take advantage of it. And I guarantee you they'll get a good shot on goal. All the pressure is on Palin. There you go, 23-895. Largest crowd ever. And this eclipses the record last year, of course at the Dome in Syracuse. And a year from now, we'll be at Piscataway, New Jersey, Rutgers University. The Scarlet Knights will be hosting in that beautiful grass field there. And that's next year. 13 to 12, Syracuse, 12 seconds left. In regulation time, as John Hopkins tries to send us into overtime, and this is Panetta. Watch the Wilkins to take the shot. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. The shot, the save in Syracuse is the national champion for the second year in a row. Palin came up big. Matt Palin, who was average the whole game, had a sensational fourth period, and Simmons rides the back of that effort right into the second national championship in a row. Oh, John Hopkins certainly worked the ball around well. They had a good shot at a pretty good spot on the field. They were going with Panetta, and then they had Wilkins as an option. Syracuse covered Panetta beautifully with power, and then they cut off the option to Wilkins. That caused the pass to go all the way behind the goal. Not enough time left. They got the shot away with a couple of seconds left, and Roy Simmons Jr. getting a hugs and congratulations from his hard-working orangeman of Syracuse. There's it. You wanted a motion from the gates? There we go. Let's take a look at the last five seconds of the national championship game again. All right, Panetta starts it. He's the guy that's done it all. He was pressured. He didn't have hookers as an outlet, so he had to go all the way to the soft side. The feed came in. They actually got the pass into yeah. the crease, and it was Palem who made the sensational save at the last moment after Hopkins got the shot. They did get the shot they needed, as we expected. Syracuse came up big. You got to pat Palem on the back. All right, your final thoughts as we see Syracuse... Very, very happy. John Hopkins, John Hopkins despondent, but a great effort here in the national title game, Lee. Well, Hopkins, or Syracuse certainly deserves it. They are head and shoulders the best team in the country, but I can't help think again of all the credit that that team should get. Hopkins, the coaching staff there, to me, gets an MVP award for this game. They prepare this team like they do every week to the utmost of their ability. Syracuse, again, a fitting what champion, up, one of the most dynamic and glorious teams in the history of the game. Well, on March 4th of this year, Johns Hopkins beat Syracuse 14 to 13 in the first game of the season for both teams. They meet again for the national championship late in the month of May in College Park, Maryland, and Syracuse wins it by one goal, 13 to 12. You can't get much more even than that. Congratulations to the national champions again, the Orangemen of Syracuse. For Lee Belsmo, I'm Tom Meese. Thanks for being with us. These three days of great lacrosse. We'll see you next year from New Jersey.